the Ivy Learn Content Partner Series. Today our topic is how to set up your Cengage course and joining me today is Delilah Wilson from Cengage and Delilah will be um, doing the presentation today. She's an expert um, in her field and will be able to answer any of your questions. So please do not hesitate to ask using that question panel at any time. Delilah, you should have um, presentation rights, so if you'd like to go ahead and accept that invitation to present, you can do so at this time. And Delilah, it looks like your microphone might still be muted. Can you um, unmute yourself? Can you hear me now? Now we can, yes, thank you. Oh, no problem. So, hello everybody. Again, my name is Delilah Wilson and I am from Cengage Learning. And today we're gonna to be going through this um, process that you as the instructor would go through if you're using any Cengage materials. I'm gonna go through a couple of PowerPoint slides first and then we'll jump directly into Ivy Learn, showing you how you can get your Cengage materials up and running and um, ready for your students to access. If you have any questions, feel free to um, place them in the chat window, and I will be occasionally looking over at that screen to answer and address any of your questions. Let me just swap my screens. Okay, great. So again, my name is Delilah Wilson. Please feel free to take down my email address um, located in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. If you have any questions when you're setting up your Cengage materials, feel free to reach out to me and I will um, get you squared away. And that email address is delilah.wilson at Cengage.com. And again, today we're gonna to be going over the pairing process. So. Um, First of all, just one point of clarification because this does come up at times. Um, if you're teaching a course that has been designated a CAFE course, which means um, it's part of the Include Ed program, students have purchased their materials as part of their course fees or tuition, then those courses, they're going to be loaded by central office. So as the instructor, um, at the beginning of the semester, it, when you start off with a blank Ivy Learn course shell, if you're teaching a CAFE course, um, that content should be loaded by central office. So if you don't see anything in your course, um, you can uh, reach out to central office or um, your local department chair to um, see who you need to contact to get your course loaded with content. Now, if you're teaching a non-CAFE course, um, which means students, they have not purchased their materials as part of their tuition. They're either gonna to go to the bookstore or um, buy online their materials. Then for those courses, as the instructor, you would import that course content from the Ivy Learn or Canvas Commons. And um, I'm gonna be showing you that process, which is a quick one minute process, locating and importing content uh, from the Canvas Commons. Now, regardless of if you are teaching a CAFE course or a non-CAFE course, um, if you're using Cengage material, it doesn't matter who placed that content in the Shell Central Office or yourself, you're still gonna have to go through the a pairing process. So basically your course is going to contain content from Cengage Learning and it's going to require a one-time activation at the beginning of the semester. Um, if you're teaching three different courses with Cengage content, you're going to have to set up each one of those individual courses. But the great thing is once it's set up for the semester, then you're done with the setup or pairing process. You wouldn't have to do it again until a new semester if you were teaching a course using Cengage content. So today we're going to be focusing on how you set up or pair um, that content 
from um, engaged learning. And um, as far as the instructor setup process, when you're setting up your Cengage materials, um, if you've never set it up in the past, you are going to need a Cengage learning account. If you don't have a Cengage learning account, again, you can reach out to me. Typically during the setup process, it, it, it gives you the option to request an account, but sometimes that can take a day or two. So if you want to expedite that process, if you've already requested your account and you haven't received it, you can again reach out to me at delilah.wilson at cengage.com. So today we're going to be talking about, again, the initial pairing process for your Cengage learning materials. You may be using a product called MindTap. You may be using a product called SAM. Uh, we're not going to get into a lot of the product-specific information. Typically, in your the courses that you're teaching, there are some kind of how-to training videos. And I'll also show you where you can go out to the Cengage website for some common how-to questions. But again, the course is set up. It's just really a matter of you facilitating the course. If you're having technical issues and you need to reach technical support for Cengage, the instructor tech support line is 866-267-4986. This is a great number to have on hand. And in the next slide, I'm going to give you the student support number, which is pretty much a 24-7 um, support line. But this line right here um, is specifically for instructors, and they are um, trained in helping instructors on how to get set their materials set up in Canvas. So if you're having issues like the grades aren't syncing or just something is not working right, instructor support can help you at this line here. Okay. Finally, for student registration, and I do see some um, information in the chat, which basically talks about um, if you're missing include add content. So going back to the include add or non include add, again, students for include add, they have purchased their um, they pay for their um, engaged materials as part of their tuition. And for that reason, when they're accessing their Cengage materials, they're not going to need any special access code to get into that content because they've already paid for it. So we're not going to prompt them to enter in any access code. Versus a non-included course, students, are, they're going to need an access code because this is what demonstrates that they purchased access to those materials. So they're going to have to purchase um, typically, they go to the bookstore, they either purchase a um, textbook from the bookstore, and that textbook, if it's a new textbook, comes bundled with an access code. Um, some courses, you, they can even just do access code only if they don't want to purchase the book and they just want to purchase digital access, they can do that as well. All of the Cengage products come with access to an electronic book. Okay, so if students don't want to print books, they definitely can just go digital. And for student support, um, the number is 1-800-354-9706. And um, you can definitely give this number to your students so that um, you're not having to answer maybe some of those questions that may be related to their browser or pop-up blockers, things like that, that um, students can go directly to support for. All right, so with that being said, we're going to jump right in and show you how you can set up your Engage materials. All right, bear with me. Okay, so um, right now I'm in a course, and let's say I was teaching um, a computing course, and I needed to import. I am teaching a computing course or a computer course, and it's not an include ed course. So that means when I come into this course, I should not expect to see any content loaded in here. There's not going to be anything under the assignments or modules area. Pretty much the only thing you'll see in here is your list of students under people. Um, but as far as content in here, it's an empty course. Since this since the course that I'm teaching is a non-include ed, then as the instructor, it's my responsibility to import the, um, those materials from the um, Ivy Learn or Canvas Commons. So um, 
when I first come into my course, I'm on the home page, and you'll notice immediately to the far right, there is the import from comments. If I go out to import from comments, um, I'll be able to search for um, my course materials for my course. Most of the statewide online courses, um, they typically say statewide online. So if I just start to type in statewide, just um, sometimes it's a little finicky, so I'm going to be a little patient and type a little slower. <clears throat> and you can try to narrow your results sometimes by um, turning off this show public re resources. So this is going to greatly reduce the amount of things that you see. So when I start to type in statewide online, or if you just want to type in if you're teaching. CSIA 135 or whichever course you're teaching, you can um, search different ways. But again, when I just type in statewide online, you'll see that most of the statewide online courses, they are designated as such. And then I can come in here and locate my course. So um, let's assume that um, I was teaching a CSI 135 course. I can locate that course. Which, all right, well, I won't take a lot of time. I'll just use this History 111 as an example. So let's say I was teaching this course. I can click on this course right here. And then if I'm teaching more than one section, I can select all of those sections at one time. So let's say I wanted to import, and I know these um, course names don't line up, but Let's say I wanted to import this course into the following shell. I would just click on this button here. I mean, select the section or sections that I wanted to import this content into, and then I would choose import into course. So it's going to tell me that I've successfully started to import, and then just give it a moment, and then I'll start to, um, I'll see that course, that course content loaded. So previously, I went into another course shell, and I preloaded some content in here. So let's assume that you've, you've done your import, and now you're ready to set up your um, Cengage materials. So Cengage, we have a variety of online programs. The, the most commonly used ones at Ivy Tech are going to be a program called MindTap or a program called them. These are online homework management systems that contain the ebook, maybe flashcards or study tools or videos, and they also contain um, auto graded assessments. So um, it's just going to vary what type of assignments according to the course that you teach. Um, but typically, in order for students to start to access that course, you have to go through a pairing process. Most of a majority of the um, statewide online courses, they, they follow the same format where you're going to come into that course and it's going to give you some setup instructions that we're walking through today on this webinar. So you can see that there's this little um, document here that says MindTap Pairing Instructions. It says important if you were to read through this, it would cover what we're going to discuss on this webinar. And in those instructions, it tells you to um, copy this pairing key. And this is for instructors only, and this is what you need in order to set up your materials. You definitely want to use the pairing key that's specifically referenced in your course because each course, like if you're teaching a history course or a computing course, the pairing keys are going to be different. So you want to make sure you're using the correct key so that you're copying the correct content. All right? So... Um, the instructions in this document here, which I didn't open, they just basically say copy the pairing key. And then the instructions tell me to click on the home page for MindTap for this particular course. So I'm going to click on this hyperlink here. Um, one thing about the Cengage content, um, you can see it says loading. Um, this content, once I am going through the pairing process, it will launch in a new window. So if you have your pop-up blockers on, 
it's going to prevent you from setting up this course because um, it won't load the content up in the, in the new window. So you want to make sure you are allowing pop-ups from Cengage when you're going through this setup. Typically, depending upon the browser that you're using, you'll typically see if, if a pop-up blocker was prevented a page from loading, you'll typically see like a message in the upper right-hand corner saying, Firefox prevented a page from opening. Do you want to allow pop-ups? Or Chrome prevented a page from opening. Do you want to allow pop-ups? Uh, I'll show you guys. Um, actually, if you just Google engage pop-up blocker, you'll see like this website right here, enabling pop-ups. So this is a good page for Cengage that basically talks about if you're using Internet Explorer or Firefox or Safari, you can see it gives you step-by-step -step instructions on what you need to do in that particular browser to allow pop-ups. This is a um, big thing at the beginning of the semester, even with students, just they need to know that um, pop-ups should be enabled because a lot of people don't notice that message. So feel free to come out to this site here and share this URL with your students so that they have um, guidance on enabling pop-ups. All right, so with that being said, I click on the Cengage MindTap link, and it's, as the instructor, it's going to prompt me to create a course in MindTap. This is the pairing process or the setup process. Um, now, it's very important that you choose this option to copy from another instructor because you're copying content that was created by a course developer. And you want to make sure you're getting that exact same content. So you can see when I choose that option, it's going to ask me for a course key. That's the course key that we grab out of um, that's the course key that we grabbed out of those instructions initially, was that very long key. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and paste that here. I'll just click on this verify button. And when I click on verify, you'll see that it asks for me to name my course, to give my course a start date, end date, and select a time zone. Only the um, fields with an asterisk are the required fields. So when you're naming your course name, I recommend that you like be very specific in how you're naming that course. So if this is my summer 2018, I will put summer 2018. You never just want to just use something generic, for example, just like CSI 105. Because if you've used that name course in the if you use that course name in the past, um, it, it's gonna it's going to reject your course setup because each course name that you create has to have a unique name. So as a best practice, I just always tell people just to add something like summer 2018, section one, something like that to make sure that this course name is unique. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is put my start date for my course. You want to use your actual course start date. So let's say this course is starting June the 4th. And that's the day I'm going to start. You especially want to use your ex actual course start date if you're teaching a non-include ed course where students have to place in, where students need to redeem an access code. Because this start date, this is what's going to help to determine the grace period that we give for students who maybe they don't, they haven't purchased their access codes yet because they're waiting on financial aid or something. So use your actual course start date. This is going to help to drive the grace period we give. Don't worry if you, don't be worried if your, your course starts on June the 4th and you feel like, oh, some students may want to get in June the 1st. They're still going to be able to get into their materials, but the grace period is going to start on this date, the actual course start date. And just as a FYI, the formula for how much time we give students for their grace period is we give up to 14 days of free access to the Cengage materials. And um, the 14 days is based upon for every week that you teach that course, we give the students 
a three day of access. So if you're teaching the eight week course, they get eight days of access. If you're teaching a 16 week course, since we only give up to 14 days, your students will get 14 days, all right? So use your actual course start date and then go in and plug in your actual course end date. Some instructors like to maybe push it out maybe a couple of days past the official end date just in case you have some late stragglers and you want them to be able to get into that Cengage material to take the work. And then finally, I'm going to go in here and put in my time zone. And I'm just going to click continue. So I did a lot of um, elaborating, um, explaining things, but typically the pairing process, you can see you just copy the course key, put in your course name, start date, end date, time zone, and that's it. You're set up. <laughs> You'll be able to now moving forward, you'll be able to get directly into that Cengage content. And again, we have different programs. So if you're using this particular course, it's using a product called MindTap. And this MindTap course is going to contain like ebooks and videos and graded homework assignments. The great thing about the graded assignment, um, if those materials are part of the student's actual grade. Those same assignments from Cengage, they're going to be linked into Ivy Learn. So, for example, this particular assignment you see is worth 20 points here. And a student, they click on this activity from Ivy Learn, it's going to allow for them to launch that assignment in a new window and it just takes them directly to that Cengage assignment. And typically, you'll know which program you're using because all of the Cengage programs, they have the logo in the upper left-hand corner. So if it's MindTap or SAM, you'll easily be able to see that. And for this particular graded assignment, if students were to start on this and complete it, since it's linked to Ivy Learn, that grade will automatically transfer to um, the Cengage Learning Gradebook. All right, so I am going to pause because in a moment we're going to talk about student registration to see if there are any questions on the pairing process um, for your Cengage materials. Are there any questions? If so, feel free to type them in the chat window. So as I wait for questions, I'm just going to reiterate the main pieces of information that you'll need is a Cengage account. Um, you didn't see me log into my Cengage account because once you log in, um, you'll never have to enter your Cengage credentials again in Ivy Learn. But the very first time you ever try to set up your Cengage materials, it's going to ask you to sign in. And you can always reach out to Delilah Wilson at Cengage. Delilah.Wilson at Cengage.com. Um, and also, do know that you're going to always need the appropriate pairing key for your course. And if you feel like you're not going to be able to remember the instructions that we just covered, um, it's all listed um, in this document here where it just tells you copy, click on the home page link, and then it just gives you those instructions that we just walked through. All right, I don't see any questions in the chat right now. So we're going to go ahead and um, talk about the student registration process. All right, the great thing about Ivy Learn is you have a student view in here where you can actually um, go to the student view and experience your course as a student. So that's what we're going to do right now so that we can just walk through the student registration process. In this lower left hand corner of Ivy Learn, you'll see that there's this settings button. If I click on settings, one of the options in the settings menu is um, a student view. So you see right here, um, there's the student view, and this allows for you to enroll a sample or test student in your course so that you can see exactly what your students are experiencing. You can take assignments from a student experience. So this is a great view for you to um, familiarize yourself with. Um, if you do go through this student view and you leave the student view, I recommend that you just say leave the student view as opposed to resetting the student view because if you reset, you're going to lose work um, and you're going to have to go through the registration process again when you come back into the student view. So just simply leave as opposed to resetting. 
All right, now, now that we have our course paired, um, students, they should be able to access that Cengage Learn, the, the Cengage Learning Assignments or eBook. If you don't set up your course, like I just showed you, when students click on the Cengage Learning um, link to access an assignment or the eBook, it's going to say, we're sorry, your instructor hasn't um, completed the course setup process. So if you hear students saying that, then you know you need to go through the pairing process. And how do you know that you're successfully paired? Well, when you click on one of those Cengage links, it, it just takes you directly to the Cengage um, content as opposed to taking you to that course setup page. All right, um, so let's talk about student registration. The students, in order to register, um, they just need to click on any Cengage learning activity. Um, and typically, let's see if this one, Typically, there's like a resources or a getting started area, something for the students to let them know, um, here are some registration instructions or um, click here to register for MindTap. So there's typically some types of links, hopefully in your statewide online course to direct students um, to kind of get them started. Um, even though this link is saying click here to register for MindTap, Technically, they can click on any MindTap link to register, but just to make it painfully obvious for the students uh, where they need to go initially, um, this particular course has a link that says click here to register for MindTap. All right, so I'm a student. I'm in my student view. I am going to say click here to register for MindTap. I'm going to click this button to load this in a new window. This is why it's important to uh, for students and instructors to allow for pop-ups from Cengage. When I do that, it's going to load this in a new tab. As a student, it's going to prompt for me to um, pay online or redeem an access code. So if I, if I purchase an access code from the bookstore, this is where I'm going to put in that access code. And um, or if I don't have any access codes yet, I'm just going to say I'll pay later. <clears throat> now keep in mind this screen right here. This is only for non-include ed for those students who haven't paid for their materials as part of their tuition. For the include ed courses, they're not even going to see this screen. We bypass them directly past this screen. Uh, we they don't even encounter this payment screen. So I'm just gonna say, I'll pay later, take me to my course. You know what? I think I need, I'm gonna reset this student view because it didn't prompt for me to register. And I really wanna show you the, the full student experience. So just bear with me one moment. <clears throat> Let's, I'm going to go through this process one more time because it should. I do want to show you how the students, they have to create a Cengage account, just like if they're signing up for Snapchat or Facebook or um, whatever, Instagram, they have to create an account. It's the same thing with the Cengage product. They have to just create themselves a username and password. And then once they create that username and password, it's going to be stored in ID Learn, and they're not going to be prompted to um, sign in. So hopefully you'll get to see that now that I reset my student view. All right, so I'm going to go back to the module. Click here to register for Cengage. All right, it's loading. All right, so this is the screen that I wanted to see. So if this were a student's first time accessing Cengage through Ivy Learn, it doesn't matter if they are include ed or not, they are going to have to create a Cengage account, okay? Um, this is just, like I said, most online, if you're, if you're accessing programs online or websites online, um, a lot of them require for you to create an account. So this is not foreign to students. So 
Um, as a student, I would just come in here and I would create an account. So let's say, So I'm going to put in my email address. They can use their school email address or their personal email address. This won't impact any grades syncing into Ivy Learn if they use their personal email address. They're just creating themselves a Cengage account. And ultimately, by creating a Cengage account, this will allow for them to access like the Cengage mobile app where they can um, view their eBooks on their smart devices, um, and also maybe look at flashcards or different study tools. So that's the purpose of them creating a Cengage account so they'll, that they'll be able to access um, Cengage via their, via their mobile devices. So I'm going to go ahead and set a password for myself, put in my birth year, and then I will accept this agreement. If I don't want to receive any Cengage offers, then I'm just going to bypass that and then I'm going to create an account all right so when they create an account which is what we did not see <clears throat> earlier because I didn't reset the student view and again that's why if you create an account that's why you don't want to reset it from your student view because you don't want to have to keep creating an account each time you log in but um and then this is where they get to the payment screen. If I don't have a payment code right now because I'm not in an include ed course, I just say I'll pay later, take me to my course. And then I can use these materials all the way up until um, that grace period expires. And again, the grace period, it just depends on how long the course is. Is it an eight week course, a six week course, a 16 week course? So that's what's going to drive the student's uh, grace period. And now moving forward, they'll anytime they click on any Cengage assignment link, now that they've gone through the registration process, they will not be prompted to create an account. They'll just be um, taken to that materials. Now, if, if they haven't put in a payment code, they're going to keep seeing this payment screen here where they can um, say, I'll pay later, take me to my course. And as you can see also right here, it tells the students when their temporary access expires. So um, that's the student registration process. Um, just a couple of things for um, you as the instructor. Um, if you're, so for the most part, these Cengage materials, um, you're not setting any due dates on it. Like these courses, as far as the Cengage content is concerned, is on autopilot because it's already been set up for you. Um, but depending upon the program you're using, you may have some questions like, well, how do I do this? Or how do I, maybe I do want to set due dates on my MindTap assignments. Or um, the grades aren't syncing from MindTap to Canvas. How do I do that? Um, so, we have a Cengage.com, and the reason why I'm not going to specifics on this website is because you guys are using different products with different courses, and they're all set up different. Um, so this training is pretty general. However, if you go to Cengage.com forward slash training, this is going to take you out to the Cengage learning website, and from here, you can see all of the different Cengage programs we have, MindTap, iLearn, Applia. So from here, you would select your product that you're using. If you're using MindTap, you would select MindTap. And on this Cengage.com forward slash training website, you can um, browse, like, for example, if I wanted to look at the, um, we have videos on here. So if I just wanted to look at the video training, and I only wanted to focus on the <laughs> instructor video training, then you can see, you can come out here and there are, um, and let's see, let me narrow this down to Canvas. <clears throat> you can come in here and you can access different um, training videos. So 
there's a video in here that talks about setting due dates or how to think or how to extend assignments for students if you do set due dates. So uh, this is a great website to come if you want to see like brief three or four minute videos on how to do something. And also feel free to reach out to me, Delilah.Wilson at Cengage.com. <clears throat> so I know that we have an hour allotted. So the remainder of the time, I can address any specific questions. But um, that is pretty much all I have to cover today. I'm going to put back up this student support number for you. If you want to provide this to your students, 1-800-354-9706. Oh, and also, um, in most of the courses, you'll see under the modules for the students, there's also a, um, there should be a Cengage technical support. So if they wanted to click on this link, or even as the instructor, you can click on this Cengage tech support link if you wanted to file a ticket online. Maybe you don't have time to pick up the phone and call, then you can always just file an online ticket by clicking on that Cengage support link. All right. Did we have any questions in the chat window? Um, I'm pretty much all yours for the next however many 18 minutes if you have questions. If not, looks like some people probably have already jumped off. Um, so I will turn it back over to the host. Delilah, thank you so much uh, for this great presentation. If there are additional questions, um, you're welcome to raise your hand and we'll unmute your microphone if you feel more comfortable asking your question instead of typing it. Let's see. I don't think Did we have any. Okay, you were you were answering questions in the um, or you were typing in the chat. Okay, I just want to make sure that wasn't uh. Okay. Yes, I was providing additional information in the chat box. Yeah, but I don't see any questions. I don't either, Delilah. Thank you so much. Um, once again, a great presentation. Uh, really appreciate all that you do for us, and uh, we will see you again really soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Hey, you too. Goodbye.